What's going on, everybody? Mark Sadath, Hurricane Track here, Saturday afternoon, ninth day of November 2024. I got to tell you, this is a remarkable pattern for November. November can be kind of active, especially with winter weather trying to creep in. We certainly have got that out in parts of the Rockies. And the tropics can sometimes play a role, but usually October and November, the weather over the lower 48 is mostly fairly stagnant. You know, anything that comes along typically is a memorable event. It's either all or nothing. And in this case, it's an uh, it's all. I mean, really, we got what was once a major hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico. Raphael now weakening to a tropical storm. But, I mean, just look at that. Even on the thumbnail graphic, there is a lot going on. It is quite a remarkable pattern. So I figured I would, you know, basically choose that as the center point for today's fairly quick update. So thanks for tuning in. Let's take a look at what we've got out there, shall we? First of all, National Hurricane Center. Well, we do have a yellow X for this area. Uh, a lot of people seeing this on social media, uh, and I'll show it to you in, in a close-up fashion in just a moment. Sure looks like a tropical cyclone to me. We'll look at that more in a moment, though. There's Raphael still winding down, but holding on. And you remember with the election? Of course you do. The number was 270, 270 to win. Boy, we heard that a lot in the last several days leading up to Tuesday night. In this case, we need 160 to win, so to speak. Meteorologically speaking, this is all just weather geek stuff. 160 is the number, and we hit officially a hyperactive season from the metrics. And yes, it is important because, again, as I've talked about a lot, it shows that we have had very quality storms over quantity. You think about 2004, we had 14 or 15 named storms, whatever it was, and an A score that was, what, over 200, right? And yet we're, we're going to have more named storms this year, and we will probably crack 160, which is the uh, beginning of hyperactive, uh, maybe in just the next little bit. But it's all up to Raphael for now to put us over into that hyperactive um, category we'll see. So there's the map from the National Hurricane Center. This is what it looks like on our interactive map. Again, a pretty remarkable journey here for Raphael. And too bad it can't just keep going and do like this giant loop down here. That would truly be the ultimate Central American gyre, wouldn't it? Uh, it's going to die away and be a low-level swirl, and therefore it'll just kind of get pushed down here by high pressure up to the north and it'll just kind of die away. And I told you I'd be showing it to you over the coming days. We will get to that. It is starting to lose its structural integrity, if you will. So here we go. 160 to win. Where are we? This gets updated about every six hours. I think we're going to do it. We're at 158 and a half as of the last update here on the Colorado State University tracker, so to speak. And um, uh, Raphael itself a respectable 11 points in the ace category this time around. Some of the bigger producers, of course, Milton at 23, 16 for Leslie. And look at Helene, as devastating as Helene was, it produced most of its ace in those last couple of hours or half a day or whatever it was, maxing out at 120 knots, pressure down to 938, made it a category four, but it didn't last very long. Raphael, on the other hand, has lasted longer, peaked out at 105 knots, and so it's really, really interesting how these things kind of pan out. There is Beryl, the biggest ace producer of the season. Of course, it lasted quite a long time. It was out there 10 name storm days. That's important as well. So an interesting metric here. We're almost to that 160 hyperactive mark. All right, here's the wide shot this afternoon getting into the evening. There's Raphael, and I mean, look, you can clearly see our mid-latitude cyclone in here pulling moisture in off of Raphael, off of this very warm gulf. Absolutely remarkable. That's why the title says Remarkable Pattern, because we are seeing the influence of a tropical cyclone down here, the warm gulf, all feeding into this mid-latitude storm, and that has helped. It is no doubt, no doubt in my mind, if I had to prove it? I guess I could, but I think you can clearly see the connection here. This storm pulling in that moisture and the precipitable water values had to be higher. Everything came together just right because boy, oh boy, we are getting 
so much snow out here. I mean, look, you can even see it starting to show up on the visible satellite uh, all through here. That's snow on the ground as the storm is starting to wind down. Now, this is interesting down here. This is that yellow X that the Hurricane Center uh, mentioned on their outlook. And then we have tropical energy all down through here. And all of this is going to try to pile up over in the Western Caribbean over the coming week. So we're going to have to watch that as we continue to march through the month of November. A little bit closer up for you. There's Raphael still trying its best to hold on over those very warm waters of the Gulf of Mexico. Dry air, sheer, all battling with this system. Heck, it's even trying to pull in moisture from the Caribbean Sea. The phenomenon, this energy up here, this heat engine doing everything it can to hang on. It's not a living creature, but it sure acts like it sometimes, these systems do, I think, don't they? They sure do. They try to go where the warm water is and all sorts of stuff. Uh, but anyway, this is the other system. I mean, come on, that doesn't look too different than Raphael over here. We can all agree to that. So I think if this persists long enough, uh, it could get upgraded. I mean, part of the key is the persistence of the thunderstorm activity. It can't just be around for 6 to 12 hours, I guess. Um, but we'll see. That could be Sarah sitting out there, or certainly our latest depression. I, I think, you know, maybe in a different year, because this year they're not naming these short-lived systems clearly. And, you know, don't want to criticize or second-guess the National Hurricane Center. I do not work there. But I look at that and I think, boy, that looks like a tropical cyclone to me. And uh, we'll see. Uh, it's only of concern to marine interest out here. But, as I'll show you in the modeling, it is going to be heading in this general direction over in the next couple of days. And it's got a little bit of a window there to stay organized. So we'll see what happens with that. Vorticity-wise, uh, certainly there's the... Well-defined vorticity signature for Raphael. There's the one for the unnamed system east of the Bahamas. More little pieces of energy here moving into in the vicinity of the Caribbean Sea. And I think things are going to stay pretty active as we go forward. So this is a GFS from the 12Z run today. There's our little feature out here. It shows up very well on the GFS operational here. No doubt about it. Global models. I mean, if you ran the hurricane models on this, it would be really interesting if it was an invest and you ran the H-Wharf and the half models, what would you get? <clears throat> I guess we won't know unless they initiate this as an invest. But watch this. Raphael, again, is going to end up somewhere down here. And then let's watch all these little pieces of energy here as they try to pile up in the Western Caribbean over the coming days. So let's just move this out to the next week. First, our system near the Bahamas doesn't have much of a window left, but the energy will move into and across the Bahamas, as you can see there. Raphael just kind of dies out, and its low-level vorticity ghost stays way down south, getting in towards the Bay of Campeche there, and we're at three days out. And if you go farther out in time, or further out in time, whatever the grammatical way to say it is, notice, too, this is day six, and then there's day seven. Uh, huge high pressure building in again over the southeast, are we ever going to get cold air? I mean, my goodness. I mean, I like it kind of warm, right? But what is happening? This is the La Nina pattern, I guess. I don't know. Very, very interesting. The storm track is up here. Big ridge over the southeast. That's going to keep anything that develops in the Caribbean pretty suppressed. But that does help the air pile up down here. And we will probably see something else develop before all is said and done. The Euro is on the same track as that. And the Euro, in fact, does make our system right here uh, hang on just long enough. We might get a name storm out of it. We shall see. Interest in the Bahamas, cruise ships, so forth. You know, they all know this. Uh, you got to watch that because, you know, that is weather. You know, I mean, let's go back to the satellite. You don't want to sail your cruise ship into that. That's for sure. And much less your catamaran or your yacht or whatever. I don't care what kind of a many billions you've got in your bank account. Putting your yacht in there, no bueno. So that's why we track these things. They are important, even if they are not big headline makers. But the euro out to a week also shows generally active pattern down here in the Caribbean. Uh, big old high pressure over the east. Somewhat of a front that does come through. This is a week out. But basically, just like I said in the thumbnail here, it is a remarkable pattern considering the time of the year and the time of the month it is, November the 9th, 
and we still got tropical cyclones on the map and massive snowstorm and wow just it's remarkable so there you go have yourselves a great rest of your saturday thank you as always for giving me a part of your day from all of us at the hurricane track community thank you for watching i'm mark suddeth i'll see you again tomorrow